The Psalms are prayers and hymns of the Bible par excellence. Uttered in praise, joy, sorrow, and despair, spoken or sung in private and in public. By lay people, kings, poets, and priests, coming from both the righteous and repentant sinners, the Psalms have served as the prayer book and the hymn book. To generations of believers, for every man on every occasion can find in its Psalms. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Whispering Hope Daily Lesson Study Review. Here with us, we are studying this morning, Your Mercy Reaches Unto the Heavens. That's our topic for this week, Your Mercy Reaches Unto the Heavens. And our topic for this morning, Wednesday morning, Prayers to the Majestic and Merciful God. But before we go into our discussion, we'll have our prayer by Elder Joseph, and Elder Josiah will read for us our memory text. Good morning, pleasant Wednesday morning to all. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we do give you thanks and praise for your mercies and for your continuous blessings that you have been bestowing upon us, upon all the listeners and, and the um, leaders here on Whispering Hope. May you continue to be with us, and as we continue to bring these timely messages to our listening audience, I'm asking you, Lord, that each and every heart will recognize that you are God, that many will be surrendered to you, because you are God who is a God of grace, love, and mercy, and you are coming soon. You are coming back. You are coming back for those who love you and those who have made a covenant with you to be your son. As a matter of fact, you said, but as many... As receive him to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So Lord, as we present these messages, I pray that someone, somewhere, somehow, will call you Father and God, that they will accept you as their Savior, so that when you come, you can say to them, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of the Lord. May you bless the present, uh, presentation today, bless the moderator, bless Elder Richards and Elder Josiah, I pray. In the name of Jesus, I do ask with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, our memory text is taken from Psalms 57 and verse 9 and 10. I'll be reading to you from the New King James Version, which says, I will praise you, O Lord, among the people. I will sing to you among the nations, for your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. Amen. Amen. So, we're going to look at our topic, subtopic context, as well as any insights and main points that you get from our memory text this morning. So we'll begin with Elder Richards, then Elder Joseph, and then we'll end with Elder Josiah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, you know, welcome back to Whispering Hope. Uh, you know, as we, as we look at this week's memory text, you know, Psalms chapter 57, verses 9 and 10, we notice that the psalmist begins with, uh, you know, David actually begins with an appealing for mercy, you know. And then even though he's, he's requesting mercy from God, he has the confidence in God that God will grant him mercy. And so with his, his lips, you know, he's singing honor to God. And nothing, no trouble, no adverse situation could stop him from requesting his mercy or going to God having the confidence. We know that as we study, you know, the, the life of David, we know that at this time, some 15 years, Saul has been in a pursuing David to kill David. And, and so David back was against the wall, you know, you know, basically has nowhere else to run to. But he, he knew he could run to God. And so he is reaching out to God you know, to, to help him, you know, and so in spite of it, you know, in spite of everything, he understands that God, he's given thanks to God, and, and he understands that no matter how or what he may go through, he's thankful, he's cheerful, and because he understands that God will take care of what's going to happen. God will grant him mercy, and, and so he understands that there's a God he can go to, and, and so the truth of God even from difficult circumstances, David know that he can reach out to God and God will grant him mercy. Amen. Amen. You know, last week we were we studied how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now, in, in, in our memory verse, we I'm gonna look upon two things that comes out to me. It is that David recognized that no matter where he is, that he can give God praises, mm -hmm. right? He can give God praises 
any place that he is. Why? Because God is merciful wherever we are. No matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, God can still, uh, God will still listen to his people. So there is no place too dark, there is no valley too deep, there is no mountain too high, there is nothing that is so egregious to us, even in a strange place, that God wouldn't listen to us. He says that he will hear, for his mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds of heaven to earth, earth to heaven. God himself is there to take us out of any calamity or any troubles that we find ourselves into. All we need to do, the key word is to praise him wherever we are and under whatever dire circumstance that we might find out. Amen, amen. You know, when I read uh, the memory text, I will focus on, I'll probably put my focus on the last verse of the, the memory text. It says, for your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the earth. One, it makes me realize who I am compared to God. And when you said your mercy reached to the heavens, can you imagine that God is the one who puts everything in place and he is the one who controls them? Imagine God's let go of his control. What this whole universe, what will happen to this whole universe? So because of the mercy of God, everything is still in place. And when it comes to the, the truth, it says we are the only being, we are the only planet that is that has doubt about God. So the truth, God, he says the truth unto the cloud. It's for us to understand the truth because in, uh, I think, Revelation 21 and 22, Revelation 21 verses 27, Revelation 21 and verse 27. And if you go to Revelation 22, I think it's verses 16 or 17, when it says, who shall not enter heaven is who make it alive. See what I'm saying? So the thing is now we have to hold on to God's truth because if we don't, everything that we are standing for here, if we continue to make a lie of what God provides, we will not see the face of God. So we are to cling on to God. And when it, when it comes to today's lesson, when he talks about praise the majesty, it, 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 it reminds, of, uh, reminds us of who God is and why he is that way to us as human beings. Amen, amen. So we're going to go right into our text. We'll ask Ella Richards and Joseph to turn to Psalms 113. Ella Richards, you'll read verses 1 to 4. Elder Joseph will read 5 to 9. And Elder Josiah, you'll read for us Psalms 20, 123, 123. And then we'll come back to our questions. I'm reading Psalms 113, verses 1 to 4. 1 to 4. All right. Praise ye the Lord. Praise all ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun and to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Continuing with the King James Version. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes and with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Psalms 123. Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hands of their masters, and as the eyes of maiden unto the hands of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until he have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. For we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with contempt of the proud. So our question here, what two different aspects of God's character are depicted in these Psalms? So this question is for Elder Richards and Elder Joseph. In, in Psalms 130 and 123, as we've just read, the two aspects of God's character depicted are, are, first of all, the greatness of his glory, because not only is he greater than all the heathen nations, their kings, their leaders, you know, etc., 
but his glory extends above the heavens. And, and But in spite of his might and his power, uh, which is not limited to time and space, he is humble and very caring, especially to the poor and the lowly, the rejected and the dejected. You know, he gives hope to the hopeless and honor and joy to the downtrodden. And, and so and in, in chapter 123, we see God as, as, as very given and merciful. You know, to, and so to the afflicted and to the sinner, and no matter, you know, how long it will take, because, we, you know, God's time is not our timing. So no matter how long it may seem to take, you know, mercy will always be granted unto us when we recognize our need for it. And, and so we see what? We see an all-powerful, almighty God, and we see a loving, caring, and humble God. So those are, I think, are the two characteristics that depict it. His power, his great, his greatness, and his mercies. One song, where does it say? Majesty. Worship his majesty. Oh, you know the song. I'm not gonna sing all of it. But <laughs> first of all, see him as the mighty God, powerful, exalted, all power. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ himself say, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So we see him as a majestic, powerful God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who spoke and is stood forth. Hmm? This is what we see him as. But at the same time, he is merciful. And Elder Richards had talked about that. We see his mercy. And his mercy is, the other side of his character is being merciful. That he comes down, he looks down. And he looks down upon us human beings who were made a little lower than the angels. Who have fallen into sin and contempt and, and are disgusted in our characters. This same majestic God comes down and he looks upon us as a matter of fact the lesson says that he stoops down you know when somebody stoops down you're under a bed and you, you are looking for something and you can't find it and you go down on your knees and you look under the bed you stoop down to say look come out you're under there we used to play when we were children dolly Kesha. remember those days <laughs> and we would run into the house and go under the bed and hide and go under the house you have to stoop down and look to find the individual you know and so we see god as doing that something that we can connect with the god who made heavens and earth is now coming to earth stooping down to look for those of us who have gone astray as a matter of fact in genesis it tells us that after adam's sin god came down to look for them he came down look for them and begin to call them that's the kind of god we see there what exudes from him is his character his love his grace his mercy that he's not willing that none should perish but that all should come to repentance this is the kind of god we have and so we see the two aspects of him majestic yet still humble that's powerful in the name of god amen amen i see that elder Josiah wants to give his input, but I would like him to merge his input with the question I have for him. And okay. the question is, what should really motivate worship? You know, I, I had I had this discussion with Elder Richard some time ago in terms of why do we go to church? Why do we go to church? And when I read Psalms one thirteen, you know, it brings back a, a, a favorite song that I have, and uh, same number eighty six with. Is that, oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder considered all the words thy hands have made. When I when I listen to that song, right, and, and I read Psalms 113, and there is no there is no ambiguity about who God is. And it when you when as a Christian, when you recognize that God is like like uh, Elder Richard and Elder Joseph said, God is so powerful. We cannot comprehend, we cannot start to comprehend the majestic power of God. So when you realize who you are compared to God, you have nothing else but to say thanks and praise to God each and every moment of your life. So that's what that's what the motivation I get when I realize who God is. And who I am, a sinful human being, it, it makes me always want to worship God because there is no other. Some people in our lifetime, in our life today, trying to discredit God by throwing science in the whole thing. And they can't come up with anything. But when we as Christians really believe that God says, let there be light. Let us make man in our own image. And believe that God did it. And not only that, he gave us evidence 
to show that he is the creator. He gave us evidence in our, in our own life to show that he's still on the throne. We have no other course but to say thank you, Jesus, and worship him. Amen, amen. So our next two questions are personal, which means everybody gets a chance to answer. So our first question, and we're going to begin with Elder Richards. Dwell on the cross and what happened there for you personally. What has Jesus saved you from? The simple answer is that uh, we are saved from sin. <laughs> That is a simple answer in a whole nutshell. We are saved from sin. So I'm saved from my sinful ways and, you know, sinful action. But also the cross of Christ, the act of, of, of what Christ did on the, on the cross is necessary to preserve both God's love and his redemptive power, you know, in salvation of God's people. And though his death on the cross is of great importance, I believe more his resurrection is what complete the victory over sin. You know, his resurrection, because without the resurrection, there is no victory over sin. Without the resurrection, you know, sin does not die. Without that resurrection, the cross was just a, a means of punishment, a means of death. And in Romans chapter 6, verses 14, Romans chapter 6, verse 14, you know, it tells us that, you know, sin will no longer have dominion over us, you know? And so the chains of sins are broken. So at the cross, the chains of sins are broken. At the cross, sin died. At the cross, hell was defeated, you know? And at the cross, and at the cross heaven was delivered. And what stands, what stands there is that the way of the cross, you know, and I believe that this still holds water of great importance to us as Christians, and to all human beings, the way of the cross leads home, home to heaven. Hmm. Personal question, dwell at the cross and what happened there? What happened is Jesus Christ was crucified because I was a sinner. Well, as a little boy, you know, we used to go and steal mango and jelly and all those kind of things. We used to do those things. But as I grew up as, and, and became a man, my lifestyle was not in harmony with the will of God, totally. I didn't drink and smoke and do all these things. I was a cop, as you know, very young from school. But my lifestyle, when it comes to the opposite sex, was a base. And so I had to surrender that to Christ. You know, if those of us knew, you would know, know my, my father. He is he is a womanizer, to, 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 to be clear, my dad. So some traits of him had rubbed off on me. And I had to fight. And so when I got in contact, reconnected with God, so to speak, reconnected because I was baptized at 13 and things was going good, but then got into the open world. You know, you begin to go into a man, develop, things begin to happen. And so that was my downfall because I'm not a thief. I, I love people and all that. And do, during my career as a cop, I've never gone to court and tell a lie on anybody. Never. I've never taken any bribe and all that. So the, the only thing that I see within my life that I had to take control of was the opposite sex being fallen to the traps. And God took me out of that. So the cross for me, that God had rescued me from that and keep me going up to today. And I'm really thankful for him because without that, thou shalt not commit adultery and all those sins that of the flesh that we really gravitate to and there is somebody who might be listening not listening to me this morning might believe that hey look you are too much engraved in this that you cannot come out yes you can all you need to do is to tell it to Christ. be real with your situation when you go to when you look at the cross and see what god has done for you and it really hits your heart you need to come and tell god the truth because he knows tell him lord i have been a thief and this is bringing me down so I have now listened to your word. You have made a sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. You died for my sins. I am embracing you because your word says, but as, as many as receive him to them, gave him the power to become the sons of God. You use the scripture. And since I have accepted you, I have embraced you now, Lord. I am surrendering my will to you. Take it. And God, Bazi, will take it. He will take it. Those of us who listen, wherever in the world you are, God will take it and he will give you the power. You wouldn't look on another woman if it's woman and want to be wrapped up, tied up, tangled up with her. You would say, no, 
the, your mindset would be, I can't do that. You would be like Joseph. How can I do this wicked thing and sin against my God? If you're a thief, you work in that office and you count the money and there's some extra cash, you don't know what to do with it. You don't put it in your pocket. You put it back in the jar and tell the boss, look, maybe somebody overpaid today while I was in the cashier. This is what the sales are. And there's $500 extra that they find. You leave it there. It might be a trap for you. Leave it. Give it to God. And so you wouldn't have that desire and that zest to do that thing because of the cross. So that's what the cross means to me. I have been delivered because of what Jesus did. And when I recognize the price that he paid on the cross, I can't do nothing else but surrender my will to him. Amen, amen. And for me, for me, in the cross, Jesus has saved me from a life of sin and shame. You know, when I recognized the trajectory I was heading in, you know, the Holy Spirit grabbed me and made me realize, no, this is not what I want for you. And that helped me, that, you know, that made me turn my life around. And when you talk about the cross and Jesus, what it, what it has done for me, the Bible says, when John talks about seeing Jesus, the lamb that takes away the sin of the world, Elder Joseph mentioned about Christ coming to stoop down. Imagine God created human being in his own image. Work with me here. God created human being in his own image, right? Take it. Well, in, in our sphere, in our understanding, we would say he take a chance because he know that we were going to sin. But with God, he's not taking a chance. God knows what he was doing. Make us in his own image. And when we sin, he stoop down. He come and say, you know what? These, these people that I know that was going to sin, I am going to give my life so I can save them. And that's what Jesus did. You know, when we look back, when we look back in the Bible, some people talk about, oh, he selected a special group of people to, no, it's not, it, it, that's minute in this whole realm of salvation. Because when you look at God is saying, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, a group of people doesn't matter because it's the whole world that God put himself on the cross. Jesus put himself on the cross so that every human being that was created that was born of a woman, had the opportunity to say, you know what, I am going to accept Jesus because he bowed himself. He created us knowing that we were going to go astray. And he said, you know what, I am going to take that risk for my creation so that they can be saved. So that's what the cross means for me, that if my God who created me, loved me so much, when you read Psalms 136, because of his loving kindness, because every time you read, because of his loving kindness, because of his loving kindness, that's why, and, and go back to the question that we, we talked about, that we answered earlier, that's why we worship God, because of his loving kindness. Amen, amen. And our final question, which is a follow-up to our last question, why is it so important to keep the cross foremost in your mind? Elder Richards, Joseph, Josiah. You know, and, and as I said a little earlier on, and I'll just repeat it, you know, keeping the cross foremost in our mind is basically understanding that at the cross, sin was defeated. At the cross, hell was, was defeated. At the cross, heaven was brought down to us. <laughs> at the cross, Christ paid the penalty for sin that we should have paid you know he died for so that the world can be saved through sin and so the act that christ did on the cross for me is very important so i can always keep that so if christ did not die that death then i would have had to gone through that you know and so for that that penalty that he paid on the cross or every sin that i have committed and will commit going forward God forbid, then I will actually be know that I can go to the cross and be forgiven. Not that I'm going to willfully do things, but I, you know, I, um, as Elder Joseph said, you know, um, because of that act on the cross, you, you keep that in mind, knowing that, knowing that sins can be forgiven. You have the confidence to go to God, knowing that through to that His death on the cross brings salvation to us. And so, it's important as Christians that we keep the cross in our mind forefront in our mind so that we can continue to travel this, the right path of life and knowing and looking for that one day christ will return and we will have the opportunity to live with him in heaven so that's I, that's why i think it's important for me to keep a cross in the forefront of our mind knowing that sin is defeated and we now have the victory in christ 
Well, um, the the thing is, is that as human beings, we cannot, for any reason, forget what God has done for us through Christ and that cross. Without that cross, there is no hope for human beings. And if we discard the fact that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross, so that we might have an opportunity to live forever, the cross should be the, the what happened at the cross should be uppermost in our minds that we know that the penalty of sin has been paid for and as glassword says the elder richards that without that penalty we would have to face the music on our own so christ stepping in the father son holy ghost came and and, and you know because the bible tells us that god was in christ reconciling the world to himself while he was on the cross we can't forget that it is just as you a father use his resources and send his son to the best college and the best schools and he came out with all the best qualities and letters behind his name and he forgets the dad who sacrificed for him to get that education leave him behind what is going to be the outcome of that child he might possess the things in life he might you know becomes great but at the end of the day because he had forgotten his father and had, did not look back to his father to even say thank you he would be in some problems and so such such is us if we at any time forget what christ has done for us on the cross we'll be of men most miserable because paul said that if christ didn't die and rose again from the dead we would be as men most miserable that's what's going to happen to us we're not going to look at the cross and think that hey look if we forget the cross then that things are going to be good it's not going to be good we got to remember the sacrifice that was paid Amen. when we look back on the old testament and throughout the old testament from exodus onwards god keep reminding the israelites why i brought you out of egypt and every time you remind them they still go back and doing the same thing going back to the same thing and god keep reminding them this is why I brought you out. You know, I love you. So I brought you out of bondage for a reason. Christ came, you know, in Matthew 5, 5, uh, 17, I believe, when Christ was saying, think that, that I've come to change the law of the prophets, but I've come to fulfill. So Christ come to remind them of his purpose for mankind. And yet still, just in a little short while, before his death on the cross, they forget. And at the cross... When he died afterwards, they remember, they come to their senses and realize what Christ was saying to them. So from that time onwards, the cross is seared in the mind of people, what Christ really wanted for mankind. So when it comes to the cross, it keeps me grounded. It keeps me realizing that the love of God that he has for mankind. You can never forget that because, like I said, when Christ was reminding the Israelites, I brought you out of, now Christ is saying, no, I died for you. Don't forget that because that's the only thing that's going to save you from eternal damnation. To accept the gift that I'm giving you now. And that's the gift of salvation. Just accept Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection. And that gives us hope, that gives mankind hope that what Christ promised from the beginning, when man sin, he will deliver in the end when he returned to receive us unto himself. Amen, amen. So we've reached the end of our lesson this morning. And with so much reflection that we have done, I'm sure that you have many takeaways, but you can only tell us one. So we'll begin with Elder Joseph this time around and then Elder Josiah. And Elder Richards will be the one wrapping up for us this morning what is your takeaway from our lesson this morning the lesson is telling us about the mighty god who is majestic but brought himself low and i'm going to end with philippians 2 8 because it ties squarely into what we are saying it says i'm going to read from the king james version and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross this is what jesus done so this is my takeaway mm -hmm. that jesus humbled himself on the cross yes my takeaway is when we talk about the majestic power of god when we realize who god is and who we are compared to god it leaves us nothing else to do but to worship god because there is no other 
none other. He is the only true wise God that we are. Uh, and not just that, in, in Psalms 123, it says, even though he is the, the creator God and the only wise God, he is a merciful and everlasting God. So we have no choice but to worship God because he loves us, that he will die, he will give his life for us. Amen, amen, amen. You know, I think I want to look at this big takeaway as worship. Why do we need to worship on such a mighty being, the creator, who created heavens and earth, you know, and, and, and it's faith and peace are directly tied to worship, you know, and, and the focus of God and, and, and praising him. And so worship Worshiping God helps us, help us in our faith and help us to, to worship God. But most importantly, I believe that the reason for us to worship God is because of love. Our, mot our motivation to worship God is because of our love for him. You know, First John tells us that, you know, God loves us, right? And because of love, he did what he did, sent his son to die for us so that we could have the opportunity to live with him eternally. And, and so... In return, he has endowed his love upon us. And in return, with our love, we should worship him, right? In, in our gifts, in our service. And so because of, and so motivatedly by love, I think that is an important thing. So my take was that because of my love for God, I want to give him praise. I want to give him honor. I want to give him thanks in worship. Amen. Thank him for his goodness. Amen. Amen, amen. And with that, we've come to the end yeah. of our lesson this morning we are glad that you could have joined us and we are grateful to our panelists for sharing their experiences with us this morning now we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning when our topic will be forget not all his benefits so share the link with the family share the link with a friend and join us as we continue to study together <music>